Today is designated as Good Shepherd Sunday, so we naturally home in on vocations to the priestly ministry and consecrated life. Today in the Western world there's a shortage of vocations, not so in other parts of the world. When I was in Poland recently, the seminary near where we were staying was full. It's mainly in the Western world where the situation is worrying. Today, the idea of a lifelong commitment to any way of life, let alone priesthood or consecrated life, is out of kilter with present-day thinking. For many, it seems quite unrealistic. That, combined with smaller families, has a bearing on vocation shortage. I would say that the vocation strain has mostly to do with pushing God and the things of God to the sidelines of our present-day secular culture. Everyone has heard of Sigmund Freud. He was the founder of psychoanalysis a hundred years ago, and he enlightened us about certain unhealthy forms of repression which he believed cast a shadow over people's lives. We won't deal with them now, but today we have repressed the sense of God and of the transcendent. Those with a purely secularist agenda, they often hold sway over government policy and also exert a big influence over the media and education in general. Pope Emeritus Benedict said, Faith in God, the domain of spirituality, is banished from everyday life or marginalised. Our spiritual side, he says, has been repressed, connecting us up with Sigmund Freud here. This is the new neurosis of our time. This is our deep wound. The neurosis of our times is our silence regarding God, the retired Pope said. Vocations also tend to dry up in more affluent societies. So many superficial attractions for youth in our modern world only serve to distract the attention away from the spiritual Church vocations don't come out of a vacuum. Pope Francis said recently in one of his apostolic exhortations that we haven't enough stillness and quiet in our lives. Remember what the scripture says, be still and know that I am God. We can only hear the call of God if the spiritual dimension of our lives has been nurtured. So the crisis of vocations in the best is basically a crisis of belief. Contrary to what a large number of people think, the rule of celibacy has very little to do with the vocation shortage. If Catholic priests were allowed to marry, I believe their ministry would come across more as a job or a career choice than a vocation and they would be far less effective. Like the good shepherd, the good priest, lays down his life for his sheep. He's betrothed to the church community. The church community is his bride. Married people are expected to lay down their lives for each other and their family, so they, do a shepherd, they play a shepherding role as well. But by so doing, they will ultimately share in life eternal. St. Paul has told us that you cannot combine spiritual fatherhood of a family of God with the fatherhood of a natural family. And of course, if there were married priests, there would be no shortage of divorced priests as well. That in itself would undermine the Catholic priesthood, just as it does marriage. I also believe that we priests are not entirely blameless for the present shortage among our ranks. We have sometimes come across as being rather apologetic about our ministry and thereby done ourselves no favours. We have come across not very convincing. When it comes to vocations, we all need to examine our consciences so that nothing in our way of life or conduct dull the sense of religious vocation among the young. The voice of the Good Shepherd deserves to be heard. Thank you all for watching and God bless you all. Oh, oh.